All right, everybody, welcome back to VR Master League Season 2. Uh, week 8, this is Channel 1, and on your cast today, I'm Palador, once again, joined here by so much more subtlety on the cameras, and preparing to start on this match between Joker and Illuminati. So Team Joker coming back after that victory versus Zero to start off their day, and trying to end it uh, today here with a successful record against the also very talented and tough uh, master tier team in Illuminati. So coming in for uh, Joker, I mean, they've got that impressive 14-0, uh, now 15-0, I do suppose, after that last game uh, record here on, on the season, yet to be defeated. Now, they have seen, uh, again, we've talked about those third rounds, uh, occasionally a threat, especially against the likes of Kangorillas and whatnot, but, you know, it's a new game. 
once again, you got to wipe the slate and just get right back to uh, the work. You know, if they let up even a little bit, a team like Illuminati can very, very well uh, come back in and just do a lot of damage, take a game, ups make some upsets. I mean, at this level of play, you need to be on your A game. Uh, Joker was earlier on. See if they can do it again for Illuminati coming in here at uh, the Master Division. 1260 on the rounded MMR, 7 and 8. They had, had just a lot of really close and exciting matches. A lot of those have been on venues as well. I mean, over the weeks here in Season 2. And just getting uh, warmed up for them at the moment. But you can see currently got their, their full roster all up in here. Warming up and whatnot. Uh, over there in the Twitch chat, I see Twitch starting to... <laughs> Sorry, Andy just freaked me out for a second. Uh, I misread it because he says, Hi, Pally Dad, I have pizza. So what Andy said. I At a glance, I thought it said, You have pizza, which is correct because I, lit I literally just got pizza just now, a, a few, few minutes ago before the cast. So Andy scared me. I was checking my windows. Anyway, hi, Andy. Uh, nonetheless, yes, Palador the Pizza Door here on the cast. And I uh, see a lot of people filing in now as well. We see uh, Papa Alduin. Well, welcome to Papa Aldo into the stream, as well as Esket, X S X Sket. <laughs> uh, we got a lot of people filing in. Arrow Knight as well. We got Oogaboo and Gator Rich, as well as Pyro Games joining back in. Yeah, e Exit S Esket. Let's get it. So one of those things is probably correct. I'm gonna get my stuff uh, together though. <laughs> Uh, saying don't say my name like that says exit well how how do you want me to say it and i will say it any way you want you want me to pronounce it uh uscott i'll i'll even do that for you a man of the people but that said never mind the people and the pizza door and all that other good stuff i'm palador this is so much for subtlety this is illuminati versus joker uh, so joker running with rhino jaywalker game and kung uh, their normal roster here of course same with illuminati with their roster of ql young wits Burbs and Speedy V. And that is a grab here from QL Young to take the uh, possession away from Joker. But, well, there's Joker on the stacks. So they're going to get there first and take it back. No problem. A lot of time to work with and to roll with. To pizza roll with, in fact. And now uh, over to the tunnel. It's going to be Jay Walker just dodging that stack and trying to find a pass to game. Slightly off. Again, Joker here coming off of that two round uh, victory against Zero question is i mean that was a half an hour ago so the, do they still have uh the the blood warm you know maybe the muscles are a little bit iced now who knows we'll see what it goes for nope it's just gonna be passed in a place so i guess they're still warm they still got the the execution you know just had to take an extra an extra 20 seconds but they eventually got that disc back they found their uh classic passing plays there that we have seen a lot from them and i say classic in the sense that Ever since midway through last season, especially, I mean, really extending back towards preseason, but I mean, really, it was late in the season uh, of season one where you really just started seeing that really cohesive game coming along where uh, they were playing it slower uh, for Joker. And they were able to make their cross pass plays when they when they needed to and their slow plays. Right now, uh, Illuminati is a team who's also very, very well known for that. Uh, dating back to preseason one, back in November, December, Illuminati, formerly known as Illuminati. Uh, they were the preseason one champions here in the Americas. Uh, you know, only different difference in the roster now is they, they have Wit here. At the time, it was Ender, but otherwise, you know, rolling with the same crew. And obviously, Wit, very well seasoned player, very well pizza seasoned player. In fact, of course, uh, fame for Pizza League and whatnot. I was noticing as a rebounded shot goes for Speedy V, and then peppering it in for Pepperoni, which is to say, I was noticing a. Uh, as teams were joining in, Wit obviously he still has his uh, team name in in spectator set as Pepperoni. So shout out to Pizza League, that was kind of fun to see. But uh, nonetheless, the first two points for Illuminati coming out, and nice little cleanup duties there as Illuminati roll, rolls out on defense now, trying to hand it off. Now uh, some nice triangle passes for Joker, just back and forth working it around, but a oh, little bit of miss grab and a short leash, but still you know, taking that back. It's Jay Walker on a leash, and now underneath. Going to be handed a punch, quite literally there, but will be Rhino. A couple of fakes before crossing it over to game. Game to the backfield now, and you can see uh, the lineup, the, the spacing from Joker all over the floor. Trying to play it aggressively, or maybe bait out a shot, and uh, Will just bounce off the pole. Rhino there to grab his own miss, looking for the behind the back one this time. 
and now Game trying to collect it, but Verbs on the other end, and now Wit and on the goal, it's just a defense here from Illuminati. I was about to say before they made that play into the bubble, and a deep shot goes through, but off the barrier. Illuminati's defense has been just a thing of beauty, just like the shot from Speedy B. So nice, so soft, aesthetic, and you know what? They've got themselves the three-point lead in the first three minutes of action. So there you go. Like I said, right before this game began, right? At the Master Division. Yes, Joker has been running rampant. It's been Joker's wild. But uh, any team here in the Master Division, I thoroughly believe, can beat Joker on any given day if Joker is not playing, you know, at their at their max capability. If it, you know, you saw there the execution from Joker got a little bit uh, astray. A lot of it was because of the Dotty defense, quite frankly. But now they're going to have to defend this one. A couple fakes here. And finally making it his Kong doing what he has to do to get that through the defense because Witt has uh, been a man possessed inside the goal for a lot of this season, showing his defensive capabilities uh, very, very much so. Of course, there's a lot of great defenders here on this team. And I mean, some of them for, I mean, like Burbs, I always knew him as a, a great goalie when I was still actively playing, you know, in the teams he was in. He was a very strong defender. A speedy V as well as that speedy three. Nearly goes in for Joker, bouncing a few times. But Speedy, uh, over in season two of ESL, those days, he that's when he kind of really turned into also a very good goalie. You have QL Young. While I'm not used as much as seeing him play in goal, I am very much used to his defense because he is a stalwart brawler. He is dangerous in the midfield. He is dangerous driving it in on goalies. Right now, driving it in on their goalie. It's Jay Walker making a shot and taking the lead right back. It's Joker six to five. So, uh, some good plays there from Joker, but like you see there, like you saw there, wasn't easy. Not making it easy whatsoever. Illuminati going to put on that pressure constantly and try to keep it up. So, uh, here we go. It's Wit sending it to the left lane. Going to be a bit of a rough bounce. Slightly fast on that one. A nice shield from Jay Walker. Following it with a bounce shot. What a play from Jay. Shielded the stun, got the disc, slung it up to the ceiling. All in just a fluid motion. Uh, there were there were so many plays in there that you can you can take that little two two second uh, clip, break it down, and show a few different things that he did very well in that play. But it all happened so fast. It's as I was saying in the the zero game as well. Any of these teams in the master division, some of the things they do is actually crazy when you break it down. If you're looking at it in real time, you just say, "Well, that was a really nice play. Look easy, look smooth," but. Man, you slow it down, you realize that these teams, they know what they're doing. Right there, trying to get it going for another goal. Passing it across, across the short range triangle, but lost to Burbs. And there's the goalie, the age-old goalie, showing that it's not only wit these days. They've got the wit, they've got the brawn, they've got the speed. So a little bit of everything here. Trying to go on the other end now for a collection, but no, stolen by Rhino. Big grab, and now eyeing the clear, but recognizing the stack in the mid lane and approaching great patience to just maneuver all around this stack. And you see that control being shown as uh, that deep pass gets cut off nicely by Burbs and Speedy. So they're going to line up the stack now. Excellent regrabs. That's an open goal. Oh, look at the save from Jay Walker, though. Making the plays here already. And again, holding steady on the defensive line. So impressive for these teams and turning it into a three of their own. And how do you deal with that? You don't. Crazy plays from everyone on both sides of the floor there, defensively, offensively, stack-wise. But Joker, well, they're wise to the tricks, apparently. Just got a great grab out of the air. I don't even know how they got back in time, but they did. They found that disc, and boy, did they deliver it to the other end. So Illuminati, after playing some excellent defense and just executing really well, it could have been really done too much better than they did there, it still will just result in three points opposite way, and that's why it's just tough. It's almost deflating on a, a team morale sometimes. I know, because I've been there, <laughs> and I'm just, it's its tough to deal with, and they're going to go for another rebound. Oh, no, that was just a rebound. That was a headbutt three. Jay Walker now in a game time situation. Now, he did this in a exhibition match about a month ago, but no, he headbutted the rebounded three. <laughs> okay, well, we got that out of the way now. I've finally seen it occur in the context of a actual match. Unbelievable. Uh, so that's going to be now another turnover potentially going the way of Joker. They've got 15 points in a hurry. It seems like just a minute ago, practically, it was only 6-5, to five, and now it's ballooned to a 10-point advantage in no, no time flat. 
pretty insane, but nonetheless, uh, taking the disc back here, it's Joker in the mid lane. Now spreading the floor, and for Illuminati, they got two minutes left to get something going, or at the very least, stabilize and get set for the next round. But some beautiful pass work will result in a dunk from Rhino, bulldozing through the defense and laying it at the feet for the 17th. And quick explanation too, I, I'm sure the majority of people on the stream know, but just in case for those uh, less accustomed to Echo or maybe casual viewers, yeah, so if, if a three-pointer is shot from outside the bubble and it bounces wherever, uh, if your hands don't touch it, so in other words, if a player headbutts it in, it will still retain the, the three-point uh, you know, quality to that shot. It's only if it gets grabbed does it get, uh, does it stay, or does it turn into a two, I should say. So. Uh, that is why that's kind of a a thing and a big deal because those headbutts granted people are getting really good at controlling them but they are still a very tough thing to 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 get down accurately and master i haven't played uh, as much as uh, in previous years or previous seasons obviously because i'm casting so much now but every time i've gotten into a private i've been trying them and i've been failing at them those headbutts are just hard to control even from close range, they just go everywhere some, uh, sometimes. That said, a nice juke and trying for the dime. A Burbs looking for that flash pass, the speedy, but speedy, just flashing to the goalie instead. So a little bit of a miscommunication there. And immediately on the stack, you can see two players from each team getting all the way down. That almost goes in, and it will be rebounded by game for the two points uh, shot and 19 to five now. Just like that, as this round starts to uh, come to a close, 40 seconds left, a little less. Pyro game saying had no idea that was a thing. There you go. Yeah, the headbutts are tough. Uh, now there, there are, there is a method to it of sorts. I think there's a video out there or a uh, image you can that, that'll kind of show you the, uh, the sort of a hitbox, I suppose. But it's it's tough. You got to master it. And I think Joker, as well as several teams in the master division, quite frankly, because you see a lot of these headbutt jousts that are uh, from some of these teams that are very much intentional and precise in where they're placing it so it's not, not it's not the rarest thing in the world but it's still pretty uncommon is all to see these controlled headbutt plays uh, definitely one of those little skill sets that you don't realize at first and you know most people aren't going to worry about mastering that at first but it's just those little tiny edges that you add to your game over time that's what buys you the advantage especially amongst your peers in your division it's always the little things that will advance you to the next level, to the next, the next star, the next division. So, beauty of Echo, and even scarier, even scarier is the fact that that top of the ceiling not been reached yet, not even by Joker, in my opinion. Although, obviously, the level of play incredibly high. Uh, I think the ceiling's still sky high in what we can expect in future months and future years. Proven time and time again, just when you think that one team is just looking the best you could possibly be uh, a few months later, something new uh, comes into the meta or some new little edge, some new strat, some new rollout, some new bounce. There's always things to add. And that's what you love about Echo. And there you go. I see chat there trying to explain some of the headbutt mechanics there and the hitboxes and whatnot. Try to headbutt it with your eye, says Arrow Knight. There's a crease down the middle of your face. How do you know? Oh, your game face. Well, in any case, putting my game face on, because we got the round two about to begin here between Joker and Illuminati. Now, see, you're telling me all this stuff about the hitbox, but let me put it into context. Even even three years into Echo, I still bang my head on Geo all the time. I, 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 I can't line up my forehead in the game, apparently, because I'm always on these stacks, and I'll just, by a centimeter, graze a Geo as I fly under it, thinking I have clearance. Happens all the time. So, I don't know. I'm not sure I can do much with that information, but it is good inf information, so thank you for uh, explaining that as round two does go out. And uh, right here, it's going to be taken by Rhino. You saw him earlier maneuvering, maneuvering around very well through those stacks in the defense. Uh, it is in their wheelhouse after all. That's the style of defense they play in the midfield. They try to be aggressive, try to bait the passes. All right now the speed just buying them all kinds of opportunities. And whether it's from Jay Walker, whether it's from Kong, uh, you're seeing a lot of these drives just throwing all kinds of fakes in, and they're different much of the time uh, in terms of how many they throw. And that's the other thing as well. You mentioned how good it is to throw in shot fakes and pass fakes. 
but you can also be predictable with those if you're not careful. You know, you don't want to throw the exact same fake or the same number of fakes every time or go in the same direction on your finish, stuff like that, right? It's all those little things where you think you have the edge right now, looking for that edge, but the three will be engraved off that edge indeed, but from that corner, it's gonna be missed again, barely. Uh, still another rebound. Luwadati not happy about the misses here, but they're going to get the rebound just the same through that persistence and through the good positioning here. Triangle on the floor. They got one in the goal at the goalie, looking for that ass assaulted three on a distracted goalkeeper, uh, but it will be another miss and still yet another reset. So a fourth chance, I do believe this is now, coming in from Dottie. And definitely want to make the most of this if they can tie it up. Oh, there's a nice pass, really strongly delivered, but even stronger on the punch. Scrambling the brains there a little bit as they uh, make a fast break after making that break fast. <laughs> but uh, scrambling and trying to get the disc here in the tunnel. It's Wit, and this is the fifth attempt now, I want to say, as Wit goes for that left lane. And now driving it up here towards that corner and just trying to evade Rhino. Doing so with uh, some success? Maybe not. You see what I mean? You you think that you got them out of position, you think you got a passing lane, but Joker does a very good job as a whole, baiting passes but not getting caught out on the suns and still getting the intercepts one way or the other. Uh, now a deep fling will graze the top of the nest, or bottom of the nest rather, as a inverted game sends it over there for the anchor shot to Jay Walker. Wasted no time at all, but just the same, didn't get the points. So it will be a little bit of a slower roll into the goal now. And I say that as a million and one jukes go out, dancing all over the floor. Now going up and soaring for the goal. It's four points here, three minutes into the second round. Joker. This is uh, not too dissimilar from the first half of the first round where I'm saying nice play, great execution for sure from Joker. But you see, not easy. Having to work for it. Of course. It was after that halfway point or so that we saw Joker suddenly just go on this huge scoring burst and uh, pile in what seemed like to, to be 10 points or so in just a span of a couple minutes, uh, not less than that. So Illuminati definitely has to watch out for that Joker blitz. Be careful here, and they should be good. I mean, they're only down by four. They've got a lot of time on the clock. They're trying to find that passing game of theirs and just go for that positioning, which is c consistently excellent. It's just that defense so heavy on the pressure, always making you think. Now, Sayotos there asking about, are there open comms? Well, there's an open goal, and come on, getting the shot. Six points here for Joker. Uh, yes, open comms uh, at the, like for PC players, they pretty much universally use private comms, Discord or Mumble and what have you. If you're talking about just for the stream, uh, we kind of depends on the, the game and the context. We, uh, if teams are all using private comms, we'll usually keep open comms open a lot of the time just to catch a little bit of you know, funniness or banter and whatnot. But it depends. It's a kind of cameraman discretion. But over here, it's Rhino with a disc, gonna send it over to the right lane, and Jay Walker taking that shot. Wit saying, oh no, you're not. Jay Walker saying, oh yes, I am. He gets the goal off of that snag. Eight points for Joker. Now, Aaron and I pointing out Joker getting better at the slow play. Yeah, exactly. It was kind of. What I was talking about earlier as well, where Joker was, for the longest time, known as... I really don't want to say one-dimensional, because that does not do any kind of credit at all. But mainly the, the, the fact that it's like, okay, if, if we can play a slow game around Joker, we'll have a good chance. We can slow them down. It's not their bread and butter. Uh, but now everything seems to be their bread and butter. As Oh, getting that save with some butter. It's wit. Butter, believe it. Uh, going through the right tunnel, taking it out here. But yeah, the point is, you know, they're one, if you can call it a weak point of their game, they seem to have fixed, and that is definitely a problem for a lot of other teams now, because there's not a specific style that you can force on Joker that's going to, you know, put them at any kind of heavy disadvantage anymore, it, it feels like. Uh, that said, uh, we'll be at the bottom of the trench here. Uh, it's going to be taken by Rhino. Rhino maneuvering around. Illuminati, of course, mentioning them earlier. That was definitely their bread and butter, just uh, the slow play. Mixed with some good boosting and, and you know, team chemistry. But that's how they won that, that preseason one championship. As uh, look, looking for the anchor shot, chip off his shoulder. It's Rhino. Just waiting and waiting and waiting. Not too contested until finally he got the anchor. 
Uh, not a three-pointer, granted, but still points nonetheless, and it's 10 for uh, the side of Joker. And Sayoto's pointing out uh, the mumble, positional audio and mumble. So yeah, it's not a... That was a, a thing developed by uh, some of the community. Uh, QL Young, I know heavily one of those, and he hosts, I think, the servers. Or at least uh, a bunch of them. Right now, a shot getting some more points. A bunch of them. It's a three points here. 13 now for Joker. Rhino, back-to-back -back goals. And uh, yeah, for the mumble, it might have very well been all QL. All, the community just, uh, yeah, working at that, and QL doing a great job to host it. So I think, you know, but most... Most PC players use it, or at least a lot of them did in prior seasons. I'm not too up to date with how it's going now. Like people are pointing out, I think Joker apparently just uses Discord as that. It's going to float pretty close to the goal and be just grabbed on in by game. So putting it in for the 15 point. But uh, yeah, the, the plugin is, is out there and available, and it uh, is handy for a lot of teams. For sure. And I know. In the hopefully not too distant future, uh, Rad did express intentions of uh, implementing private private comms into at least private matches in a future update. So, uh, ideally, other people, uh, you know, on Quest and, and what have you, or just on PC in general, will be able to do that within the context of the game itself uh, not too long in the future. Now, a pass here going to Wit, Wit kind of anchoring on his uh, teammate there, Speedy, unable to make the shot, but another rebound. They've been good with the rebounds here, but the shot conversion's tough and made even more difficult by the dive defense there from Joker. It was a tough angle where Wit was shooting it from. Didn't have any angle really except uh, the narrowest slice direct, uh, directly on or uh, off the backboard, but. Now uh, Rhino will take that disc and is just going to evade once more as well as he does. You can see that position play is going to be right on position for the three-pointer off the backboard. It's 18 for Joker and now they are uh, right in position to close this one out a little bit early perhaps. So very similar to what happened in the first round where the first the four or five minutes of the round, both rounds now, were pretty close you know lower scoring uh teams keeping within you know four two four six points within each other or so you know not, not a heavy lead by any stretch and then in the second half of the match they just start uh piling on points for joker in a hurry like you take your attention away and suddenly they've got 10 more than you thought they had and right now it's going to be maybe a couple more just to end it whirling all around and that will end the match uh favoring joker here on a mercy in round two so Swirling it in was Rhino with a little bit of flash. I'm sorry for the ping game. And uh, uh, that's yeah. going to be the 2-0 on the series and 2-0 on the night across Joker's two matches. And that is to say, we're going to go to the score screen here. Take a look at what we've got before switching off to the following match, which is occurring fairly soon. Uh, we have cal uh, no, calculated Onion. On Universe 7, that was on Channel 2 by uh, Sir Dimwi and Adam. I believe that's over at this point. Or starting soon at this point, my, my mistake. And Anomaly and Instinct will be on this channel. And then in another hour, we'll have Calculated versus uh, Creamy Milk on this channel. So we've got three more matches at the very least across the channels here this evening. Uh, but to finish off the stats here and get a little read on them, it was a big effort there from jay walker with the 14 points three assists and uh, a save 24 stuns game had nine points three assists also a save in there and a uh, kong with five points three assists three saves you had rhino with 11 points three assists one save and three steals so apparently joker a big fan of the three the number three here and uh over on the side of dotty just uh having a tough time getting the points going unfortunately and uh looking like the read on the stats might be a little bit wrong i think maybe possibly in any case it was still going to be the couple of assists there for wit four saves doing the work in the goal there 13 points or 13 stuns rather uh, burbs with a steal seven stuns he had ql with a save 15 stuns you had uh speedy with 16 stuns like I said, I think we're missing some points and maybe some stats on the board. Not sure what happened there that time, but nonetheless, there's the stats that I can read for you. Uh, but until next time, which is to say in about three, four minutes from now, we've got 
uh, Anomaly facing off Instinct, so we're going to head to a brief intermission. But do stay tuned, because both on Channel 1 and Channel 2, we've got matches for you. Uh, so be right back with your next one.
All right, everyone, welcome back to VR Master League. Following up our last stream there, back-to-back -back, uh, Joker games in the last hour, and we're following this one with a couple more super talented teams here with Anomaly and Instinct facing off. Uh, this one, as chat had also pointed out there, especially intriguing as much as anything. Uh, see Demon Dreams, right? The the records looking, looking mighty, mighty similar there. Now, granted, Instinct here in the Master Division, you have Anomaly there just lurking not too far behind over in Diamond. Uh, but 10 to 4, 10 wins, 4 losses for both of these teams, having a very successful Season 2 for them. Instinct, of course, uh, coming in as an already established team from prior seasons, while Anomaly, uh, a new team by name, but bringing in some very familiar faces, of course, into uh, roster this season and it's worked out uh, to some great success for them now of course as we do approach these last couple weeks of the regular season every single win every single loss i mean you they matter all the more you really want to finish the season strong because you know these these types of matches i mean for anomaly for one thing it's going to be a really good measuring stick against again a uh, very skilled team and in instinct in the master division you know anomaly not too far behind but it's going to be one of those situations where it can ending a season strong can just really give you all the more momentum going into the postseason and even into the next season as well. Uh, so gonna be an entertaining match to watch, I, I think here. And uh, I'm not sure what to expect except some really uh, highlight worthy plays. You know, we've got a team that is just uh, a powerhouse here in terms of offense and, and speed and you know with a side of anomaly meanwhile for instinct of course you got a team who's just uh, very multi-dimensional that they have these offensive threats tremendously but they also have a lot of uh, fantastic defenders uh, it's just like i said at this level very few individual players have any kind of weaknesses or, or gigantic you know holes in their game there's just a lot of a uh, lot of i suppose you know full full talent being shown you know, this level these days. It's not It's not like the Echo of, of old where these players uh, have these uh, just gigantic holes in their offense or their defense. I mean, everyone could do a little bit of everything. And I think, you know, for Instinct, that's been one of the biggest boons for them is the fact that you have some elite defenders historically in the gold and, you know, known as individually fantastic, you know, goalkeepers. You have, they have uh, individually people known for being powerhouse on offense. Just great, you know, uh, at scoring in volume. Kanamara Chaos is one of those players. Ender is one of those players. And right through the layers of defense for the first two points. Nice cross to Ender. Just easy does it for the first deuce. See Demon in there going for instinct. See Draven just with a general woo, and I approve. See Blondie in there. Cheering on uh, Anomaly. And uh, yeah, here we go. So negative zero rolling out and that bounce is going to sail right past a pair of hands for either team sweet two seeing the three that's a one point lead now off of a very nice reaction no uh, knew he had no time to work with the comms coming through so just got rid of it fast and got rid of it furious for the three point shot two minutes into this round joust advantage now going back to instinct Now, Instinct here, connoisseur-wise, uh, on the website, you know, the fan votes uh, uh, 31 to 4 in favor of Instinct. And, you know, of course, division-wise, you know, yeah, you'd favor you'd favor Instinct that's in that situation. You'd say they're a higher, bit higher ranked. You know, they've been uh, a roster together here overall, a bit longer. Uh, Ender joining Instinct this season, but otherwise, yeah, just rolling with this roster and... You know, uh, Kavici and Cruzen. Cruzen had joined the team last season at the very beginning, and uh, really, Instinct's been a fun story to follow in the league, and just seeing their their rise and you know how uh, dominant they can be on any given day against all the uh, teams in the league, the top teams as much as any. Cruzen there, just trying to uh, deny and supply one to maybe Ender again. Ender dealing some stuns off there. Uh, meanwhile, the stacks trying to collect the disc and a light boost here from Sweet Tooth trying to redirect right into its trajectory as the defenders for instinct retreat into the goal. Uh, Anomaly here now, Chocolate in the back line, receiving that and losing it. 
So right to Kanamara Chaos, and do not give him those open threes. Gonna be very, very lucky that they didn't go in the first attempt, and not the second bounce either, nearly. But cruising. look at the placement on that right at the top of the goal. Nice rebounded shot for Cruzin to take the one-point advantage now for Instinct. Demon saying, I, I think I know Sweet. I'm going to go for his team then. Fair enough. Beauty of uh, being a spectator and, or a caster is that you can just go for both of these teams. I, you know, uh, I just, I like entertaining matches. That's, that's my job. <laughs> to watch and cast entertainment matches as Ender with a very soft uh, goal there. Eight meters a second. Had time to line it up and just gently guide it in. So seven points. But yeah, for, for us casters usually, at least for me, it's more so just root for whoever the underdog happens to be in a given minutes, in a given round. That's always a fun way to handle things. That said, losing the handles here uh, for Anomaly, not going to matter too much though. They're gonna get the disc back, but a little bit tough on that bounce. We'll now get to negative zero, so not having too much time to work with, but some clever maneuvering will uh, maybe get them this disc back. Now it does get cleared out by instinct into this orange zone. And contested there at the ramp. Trench, it's negative zero being stunned by Ender, but Ender now losing it out to Sweet Tooth and Chocolate in a blazing stack that looks uh, for that clear and boost as well. They're so very quick on that approach, but then so is Instinct now, not too far behind, uh, resulting in this pile up as they try to pile in some points, but cruising. Sending it on that uh, clear to the wall, and now looking for their clears, looking for their boosts once more, and trying to beat them to the punch. It's Sweet Tooth. So now over to Acorn. Acorn working up the floor has. A uh, player on either side just speedily boosting right past and now cutting in towards the goal. Uh, defenders there, the goalkeeper heavily bothered. And look at that nice play. So coordinated there from Anomaly. Acorn going to Sweet Tooth for that shot from right up above. One of the favorite spots, perhaps. But the goalies uh, definitely bothered, clustered up in there with uh, all these brawls and the body blocking. Makes it tough. So good job for them. And they bring it back to a two-point match here in the first round. Kanamara Chaos with that disc is going to send it to Kavichi. Uh, Ender now receiving it here by the wedge. Will be approached by the defender, but Ender is always a tough player to deal with when he's working up the floor. Very crafty. Uh, here, though, they're going to craft themselves maybe a passing play towards a goal. And Instinct is one of the teams who are uh, more often than not extremely, extremely good at the cross pass game, right in front of uh, the goal, especially. That time a little off, uh, this time a little off, but thanks to the stuns that dive there from Anomaly's side. Now, Kanamara will get the disc back for Instinct nonetheless, inverted here on the ceiling, and just awaiting uh, something to develop. Now, shot will miss there. Kabichi, another rebound here. Ender working it backwards to the bow tie to Kanamara, the positioning uh, pretty close range, but working that kind of that rectangle style where it's just corner to corner. They have these lanes, but not only doing a pretty good job covering a lot of them up and just being aggressive now on the stacks as they try to look for the clear and uh, still gets taken back though by Ender, pinning it off at mid, sending it over to Kabichi, right back down off the bounce to Cruzin and Cruzin just off. That would have been a great highlight play there for them, uh, but had to take the shot quick and that's partially maybe largely in fact due to the fact that they are going against Anomaly uh, where you definitely know that no matter how open a goal looks, you never have more than a second or so before there's almost a guaranteed stack that's going to be there running interference and, and saving that shot if you don't take it quick enough. So it's always the balance that you have to, to play. And it's always a push and pull. Chemistry and, and communication, a heavy part of that. So Chocolate with a disc has negative behind and has at the bow tie acorn as well. Now they're going to try and work in some uh, position passing as well, perhaps there, just left, right, and center. A little offsetter in the pass, granted, but Chocolate's going to deliver it right back to the other side where negative zero drives it in. Now they have that cutter, but a bit off on the pass. Slightly behind, so tough to catch it. Now just trying to catch each other on some stacks. There it is again. Uh, Chocolate getting rid of it quickly, but to the awaiting hands of Kanamara uh, on that stack from the bubble area as uh, Ender remains attached. Just kind of uh, clipping on to teammate there before now dealing with some brawls. A lot of players piling up and now separating once again. So uh, over to the backboard, going to sail right to that corner. Ender having it stolen here again, though. Lost it a few times now to uh, Anomaly. They're doing a really good job pressuring Ender quickly. 
because he's definitely a player you do not want to just watch work it up the floor. Uh, right now, we're trying to watch that disco in, but no, Ender denies it. Indeed, it is out of there, but uh, Kabichi gets another clear. So there's the, the fantastic defense, the saves I've talked about that. You know, so many players here over on Instinct are just known for providing on a game-to-game -game basis. Sweet Tooth here trying to make this a game and tie it up if they can get some offense going again. But instead, Cruzen retains possession. Uh, looking for a pass on that cross, but Zig when he should have zagged, uh, will still be nabbed by Ender. Ender going for the Ender move. Yeah, giving a punch there, giving the disc off, but Sweet Tooth cutting it out. Sending it out, and midfield now will be retained once more by Kanomara. So really sticking on this side of the floor for a long time, and that is a long shot down the three-point line. Kanomara Chaos said it earlier and got to re-emphasize. You give him those open looks from anywhere in the three-point land. Full court even. He will, uh, he will make those with a lot of precision and consistency. So he had a, a narrow ding earlier. Wasn't going to miss that one. Wasn't going to miss the second time. Very frequently the case. Uh, here, though, for Kanamara, getting the disc right back, and he was well prepared to maybe sling another shot. You can see, very confident in it as that disc goes off the backboard on the cloud, uh, the boop shot attempt, rather, right above the cloud. And now Kanamara in the tunnel, trying to juke, but uh, Acorn reading that nicely, getting the disc back. And uh, trying to act quickly to get another goal, and instead cruising will, and uh, will be 12 to five to end this round. 12, Only a few seconds, so uh, technically, technically, I think possible to maybe score one goal. Uh, that is with a fast defensive stack. You can get a, about a three-second goal or so if you get a really fast multi-man PE, I think. But that said, it will not be meant to be. And that's the round, first round in the books. 12 to 5 favoring Instinct, but Anomaly still doing a very good job, keeping it really close. Uh, not a blowout situation or anything of that sort. But uh, yeah, Instinct just executing a little bit better on uh, some of those plays. And uh, as importantly as anything, they got themselves a lot of those second attempts, right? You can see 74% of the shots taken here. Uh, in that first round was coming the way of instinct so despite you know a few misses here and there because of their good positioning that they are prioritizing at all times where they uh you know every kind of every corner and lane of the arena covered they got a lot of those rebounds off of missed shots or missed passes here and there and uh therefore eventually were able to convert on them and uh, they will do that to you you saw a lot of great uh, you know speed and defense as well from anomaly you know, being aggressive and getting uh, back on the stacks, getting some steals and, you know, causing some midline trouble uh, because of it. But once it got into the bubble, it's kind of where it started breaking down eventually. But uh, nonetheless, doing a good job for them. It was uh, five points there for Sweet Tooth. Sorry about that. And uh, two saves as well. Two saves for negative zero. One save for Chocolate and Acorn there with an assist and 12 stuns. You had Ender with five points, Cruising with four, three for Kanamara couple of assists in there between Kanamara and Ender. Uh, trying to put on some more points now as we go into the second round, though. And I'm sure it could be another one of those cases where it wouldn't take too much for the entire flow to change in this round uh, with a successful opening minute or two. I think this first, these first couple of minutes are super important for Anomaly uh, in, in terms of needing to find some good round two uh, rhythm and get that mojo going a little bit here. You know, uh, don't want to go too long getting back to the last round without some scores in there. And Sweet Tooth, just a beautiful move there. Given a little bit of the ender and given the shots on the defender. It's Sweet Tooth putting in the first two. <laughs> and then that's going to be a nice move. Just took on basically two defenders all by his lonesome. One outside the bubble, one inside. And popped off for the first couple points. Not too shabby at all. See Grumpy in there in the chat as well, stopping by. Welcome to it. And Demon Dreams saying, uh, be playing the next season. Yeah, we'll look forward to seeing that. A lot of new teams here this season. We went from around 42, 43 active teams um, in season one just a few months ago to over 170 now. And now going for that nice crossover. Oh, tapping it out. One extra pass. And well, it will work out to Kavichi. Uh Interesting choice on the pass. I'm not sure if it was 
mishandle at first because it looked like it maybe possibly did a double grab. I'm not really positive. Either way, though, you know, recognizing they had an open player and it still worked out for the points despite the defense draped all over and, and the close proximity. Uh, Instinct's going to tie it up now. So two apiece. Anomaly now on the launch with negative zero eyeing down the floor and just looking for an avenue. Uh, Instinct doing a pretty good job cutting off some of those lanes, but not all of them. And Acorn is going to back it out now to a negative and then back to Acorn again. So a few different handoffs here. They try to catch the defense off balance. Are looking good for it, perhaps. And the shot placed right at the kneecaps. And Sweet Tooth caps off another couple points to go up by two again. 12, 11, so you see, all it takes uh, sometimes, you know, when we talk about the stall game and the resets, you know, back passes, uh, the whole purpose of that, right, is to, you know, a lot of the time to drag up the defenders to make sure there's not too many in the bubble. So make it easier to find your passing lanes. Uh, but that, that being said, on these jousts, on these offensive jousts, if defenses are super aggressive, as a very aggressive offense from Kavici, uh, punishing the open goal to take a lead right back, five to four now. But but yeah, if, if defenses are playing super aggressive and you know way in the midfield, it can be a good thing, depending. But the problem is, if the offensive jousting team does maneuver past that stack and they manage to delay them just enough, that can be enough to cause a stall to get some points. That said. The aggression on the defense, very much a reality for Ender and Instinct. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a bad thing to push hard on uh, these defensive jousts. They just did it there once again, and they're finding themselves now ahead by four points. Eight to four. Not over yet. But as I said, these opening minutes uh, in the second round were going to be super important for Anomaly here. And uh, some of those kind of goals off of Joust can definitely be a, a momentum killer, can be just, just a mood killer for a team, right? Uh, still, though, trying to keep that killer instinct alive, looking for a pass to the nest. Two different players diving out at it and offering some stuns the way of Anomaly. Now, all the meanwhile, instinct catching up to the disc in no time at all. Kanemara. It's 11 meters deep, 60 meters per second. Uh, not a problem for him to make shots like that from that corner just with uh, incredible efficacy. It's 11 to four, six minutes remaining here in round two. All right, so negative zero rolls out here once more. Uh, look in now, down the floor, you can see Instinct that time they opted for a bit of a slower defense, more of a kind of a holding strong at the midfield. Will it pay off for them? Not the case, sweet tooth. Puts them up now to the six points. Still down by a bit. Still got plenty of time left. Yeah, I see Demon in there talking about you know, your team and yeah, wishing uh, wishing you guys the best of luck. Like I said, a lot of new teams in the league. As uh oh, a miss grab there. Now right back at them. Anomaly, and that was sweet too. You see how how much you get get punished at this level of play, right? Uh, teams are so fast and so aggressive that if you do mess up just one tiny thing, you see it was just the, the QB looked like uh, misgrab that initial initial attempt. And all it took was that that tenth of a second to basically guarantee the turnover and uh, be punished for the goal. And that's what you see at these levels of play. You mess up the tiniest little thing, and teams are going to pounce because they need to. And they have to, and that's what they do. That's why they end up uh, here at the top, you know, of Diamond and Master Division. So Kanemaru with the disc over in the tunnel, looking for the play over to Ender. Ender is going to drive it in from the bottom, dodging through, but not good enough. Uh, Acorn offering some stuffage there at the edge of the bubble. That said, Kanemaru gets it right back. Now has an option to Ender, but Sweet Tooth this time to cut off. So again, uh, much like round one, mentioning some really good defense being shown here from Anomaly. But the problem is that defense oftentimes in that first round would result in the rebounds regardless for instinct. So they're going to have a chance. There's that short range cross. And oh, negative, I think, got a hand on it also. But that's still going to be uh, powered through, I guess you could say, as Ender will get the goal. And you talk about momentum busters and, you know, uh, energy killers of sorts. It's those between the, you know, those, those, uh, turnovers on the offensive launches between 
these near saves that just kind of uh, ping themselves in a little bit, which, you know, happens to everyone, part of the game. But uh, those ones, they, they still have uh, definitely a tangible effect on mood for, for teams. You can see it a, a lot sometimes. Uh, that said, Anomaly, I mean, they're still looking good. They're still looking in this, not showing any, any signs of slowing down yet. Uh, Instinct putting on the pressure with 13 points so far, but really not too far behind. Now, uh, will be an open goal conceded, though, for Kanamara. And man, after his his initial miss uh, early in the first round from half court, that, that narrow ding. Ever since then, all the rest of his three-point shots, I do believe, have been in. And like I said, he shoots at a very, very high percentage when that goal is open and the lane is made available. Uh, he's happy to take it and feast on it. So, doing very well uh, for his team here today on Instinct. And now Ender... Doing very well on a turnover, but couldn't make the shot. So dinging that one off at side post. And through the midline, it will go and towards a trench. Uh, Instinct does await it there, cruising that is. Has a back pass available, doesn't go to it. Instead, Chocolate trying to take it back and uh, just look for some sort of angle. I think going for that corner cleverly to try and allow his uh, boosted player to grab it. That said, instead a shot going to be taken, rebounded, and found for Ender. The... Janitor duty is here, uh, cleaning up that that backboarded bounce and Ender making it 18 to eight. Two minutes and 11 seconds left in this uh, second round here. And now time is going to be very, very tough. Uh, the biggest enemy, no doubt, for the side of Anomaly. So a fast rollout here, they're attempting, but now just being cut off by the stack and resulting in a three just like that. Ender making that one in uh, eight seconds, 8.5. And now they're up 21 to eight. So really big scoring output, of course, for those who might have uh, seen the pre-show cards. We know Ender can make those. We know Ender can score. Uh, he's had some tremendous scoring outputs, including that, that what, 40, 42, 43 point game he had back in, uh, back in season one, or preseason one. So definitely a more than capable scorer in his own right. And if he gets hot, he gets hot. He'll make uh, three or four in a row, uh, popping off at times. Now, right now, trying to pop in for one more goal. If they can, Chocolate gets that in. So nice pass there. Sweet tooth to Chocolate and getting the, the much needed points and the, you know, the, the cross pass plays that these teams just make their, their bread and butter, their A game. You know, it doesn't need to be fancy. It just needs to be effective. And that's exactly what you get when you find those uh, passes down towards uh, the, the mid area, you know, from barrier to nest or on cutters. Just opening yourselves up for these immediate pass uh, into immediate goals, basically. Now, Kanamara with a disc. I uh, can only assume they're not in any rush at this point. I mean, the clock is winding down. They've got themselves uh, the heavy lead and a victory here in the sweep, it would seem. Now, Ender being stunned out again. and. Like I said, uh, they've done very well on Anomaly's side to get those stacks together in the midfield and really pressuring hard. But Instinct's just been able to execute on eventual rebounds. They've been able to get those uh, some of those passing plays in and you know find the numbers in the goal there. I mean, there's a nice one. Alley oop to sweet tooth. Chocolate the assist. Uh, so the game is over, but ending on a nice highlight play there from Anomaly uh, will be a bit of a more decisive victory here. Instinct in full control for most of that round. And, you know, taking that victory. But uh, like I said, Anomaly playing well on the whole. You know, going against a, a slightly higher ranked team here uh, in the goal, uh, the Master Division. And uh, still putting up a good fight. You know, was not, not easy at all. Was not a walk in the park by any stretch. Like I said, these teams at this level, they still got to show up. They still got to execute right. And Instinct definitely did. Uh, they made the vast majority of their open shots. Uh, they got a lot of rebounds. I mean, they, they put in put in that uh, the work that they needed to, to get that one done. Anomaly, just the same, working very, very hard, very you know fast and aggressive, but just not quite enough to get it done against Instinct today, who will go to 11 uh, and four on the season. Anomaly now going to 10 and five. Still a very very nice record for them as we enter these final couple weeks of regular season. So uh, taking a look here at the stats, it was 15 points for Ender. There you go, uh, four assists as well. So 
scoring in bunches, but also not shy to assist and distribute that disc, you know, leading the, his team in both categories. 33 stuns as well to lead that category. So Ender putting on uh, some big numbers. You have Kavichi putting in five points, two assists, one save, 31 stuns. Uh, Cruzen with four points, one save, 20 stuns. And then Kanamara with nine points, hitting uh, those, after his first missed three, he hit the next three threes. And just doing a great job there, as well as a couple of assists. Over to the, uh, the side of Anomaly, it was Chocolate with two points, two assists, two saves. That's too nice. Uh, over on negative zero side, three saves, 14 stuns. He had Sweet Tooth with 15 points, one assist, two saves, and uh, two steals. And then for Acorn, it was three assists and 18 stuns. So with that said, that is the round. That is the series there. Uh, as far as our streams at the moment, you can go check on Channel 2 real quick. Uh, but that match that uh, should be happening or should have been happening between Onion and Universe 7 looks like it is currently in the third round uh, in a timeout situation. So if you guys want to go to see Universe 7 versus Onion, go check that out on VRML Channel 2. Uh, especially intriguing here. Mind you, this is a round three. Universe 7, they are currently 7-0, and oh, undefeated uh, after joining as a roster midway through the season. Uh, so this is a, a big stakes match. Big stakes and onions match uh, for Universe 7 and Onion. One trying to maintain a streak, the other trying to end it. So go check out Channel 2 here. Uh, as far as Channel 1 goes, that will be it for the moment. But in about 30 minutes from now, I'll be back here to cast Calculated versus Creamy Milk. So do stay tuned for that as well. Uh, until then, I've been Palador. This has been VRML. So much for subtlety, doing the camera work uh, throughout these streams here on Channel 1 today and doing a great job of it. Thanks to everyone in the Twitch chat for joining. I uh, hope you join us again on Channel 2 as well as Channel 1 later on. But yeah, until then, be happy, healthy, safe, and good to each other. And we'll see you again very soon.